Call it a snooze, a doze, some shut-eye, a few winks. Is napping a must? How can it help us? This is the art and science of napping. Questions and answers with Dr. Rebecca Holbiard, assistant professor in the School of Psychology at the University of Ottawa and head scientist in the clinical sleep research platform, Sleep Research Unit at the Royal Ottawa Institute of Mental Health Research. Dr. Holbiard, why take a nap? Is it beneficial? Dr. Holbiard? Rebecca? Oh, sorry. For most people, naps can be beneficial. Naps will allow us to lower the sleep pressure that accumulated throughout the day. The more time we spend awake, the more we build up sleep pressure. This is called the homeostatic sleep pressure. When we take a nap, we stop accumulating more sleep pressure and we start dissipating it. This usually makes us feel more alert for the rest of the day and helps us perform better and feel better as well. Notably, we know that sleep is very important for emotional regulation, as well as regulation of a lot of other physiological and intellectual functions. So from that perspective, sleep is a very strong ally for both our body and our brain and our mind. So there's no harm for most people in taking a sleep supplement by napping. Who should nap? Well-planned naps can be beneficial for most people, especially when we don't get enough sleep at night. For example, Naps can be helpful tools for people who are working at night, for those who are traveling across different time zones, as well as for young parents who are taking care of children. Naps take different uh, perspective across the whole lifespan. For example, in children, we know that sleep is distributed across the whole 24-hour cycle, and as such, children need to take naps during the daytime. As we grow older, our sleep becomes shorter, shallower, and more fragmented. So naps can help senior people offset some of the effects of normal aging on sleep. However, caution should be raised for those who are having insomnia on a regular basis. Since naps reduce the sleep pressure that we accumulate during the day, this means that we have less sleep pressure when we go to bed for the night, and therefore we might have more difficulties falling asleep and staying asleep across the whole night. So in the context of chronic insomnia, naps can actually make things worse. Another thing that we should highlight is that if one feels constantly sleepy during the day, that might be the sign of an underlying health problem. So it might be worth talking about it with your doctor. Do you have any tips to nap well? Firstly, the timing at which we decide to take a nap is quite critical. We tend to get a bit more sleepy in the early afternoon, and this is a good time to take a nap. Conversely, if we take a nap later on in the afternoon or in the evening, We don't give ourselves time to build up enough sleep pressure before our final bedtime in the evening, and it makes it more difficult afterwards to fall asleep and to have a good restful sleep when the night comes. Secondly, it's important to plan the duration of our naps so that we can take advantage of the benefits of sleep, but also limit the amounts of sleepiness that we might face when we wake up from our naps. Sleep follows a cyclical pattern. It takes us on average about 90 minutes to complete a full sleep cycle. After falling asleep, we spend some time in light sleep, then deep sleep, then back to light sleep again, and entering REM sleep or paradoxical sleep, that stage of sleep in which our brain activity is quite similar to what we see in the wake state. So if we take a 10 to 20 minutes power nap, we can rapidly recover some energy while still remaining in light sleep, So it's easier to wake up from our nap afterwards and continue with our day. Naps of 30 to 60 minutes are generally to be avoided because they lead us into deep sleep, which is more difficult to wake up from. Conversely, a 90 minutes nap gives us a chance to complete a full sleep cycle, therefore reaping the benefits of all sleep stages, which can be quite helpful for cognition. And on the other hand, it might give us a chance as well to go back through light sleep from which it might be easier to wake up and then tune back in and continue our day. When we can afford it, it's the optimal way to make up for a short night of sleep. But overall, there's no one shoe fits all. So to find what's right for us, it's worth um, taking the time to experiment and try to find the optimal timing and duration that best suits our naps. A few other tricks. It's often helpful to set an alarm to control the length of our naps. And if we can't fall asleep, it's helpful to keep in mind that a period of relaxation and rest can also be very helpful. 
Finally, a question for ending on a good note. Can napping be helpful for students? Absolutely. Naps strengthen our memories, facilitate new learning, and also help to generate new ideas. How does it work? Well, during sleep, there are different mechanisms at the biological level which clean the toxins that have accumulated in the brain over the time that we spent awake. This allows for better communication between brain cells, and this is really the basis that underlies uh, our intellectual functioning via our ability to process information rapidly and efficiently. We also think that sleep is important for reorganizing the connections within the brain in a way that really reinforces the connections that are the most important um, with respect to what we've learned during the daytime. So really when we nap, we clean the brain and we optimize its functioning. So from that perspective, naps are really a good strategy to enhance our learning.